Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I take this time, I uh, will be making a unanimous consent request in regards to the Superintendent of U.S. Naval Academy. But I first want to acknowledge uh, my responsibilities on behalf of this body. For you see, I serve on the Board of Visitors of the United States Naval Academy. I was selected to be one of the Senate representatives on the U.S. Naval Academy Board of Visitors. We are extremely proud of what that academy has produced, and today it's producing the next generation of military leaders. It is consistently ranked as one of the top colleges in the United States, and it should be for training the next generation of leaders for our military. I'll just give you one example. U.S. Naval Academy is prepared to deal with the challenges of AI and cybersecurity. It has new facilities there and is training experts to help defend our national security in that regard. I also want to acknowledge on behalf of the Board of Visitors, Admiral Buck, the current superintendent who is retiring. He's done an incredible service to our nation as the superintendent of the U.S. Naval Academy uh, and now has completed 40 years of service to this country. Rear Admiral Yvette Davies, Davis is an exceptionally qualified to be the next superintendent of the U.S. Naval Academy. Admiral Davis is a career professional military officer who has sworn an oath to support and defend the Constitution and our country. She has consistently put service before self and the Constitution before politics. Admiral Davis graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy in 1989 with a B.S. in oceanography and was commissioned as an ensign. She later received an M.A. in National Security and Strategic Studies from the Naval War College in 2002 and an M.S. in National Resource Strategies from the Industrial College of the Armed Forces in 2012. She had a distinguished career at sea highlighted by commanding multiple U.S. warships as well as a carrier strike group. Ashore, she has served in increasing roles of importance, including as a senior military advisor at the State Department and as the chief of staff at the U.S. Southern Command. Admiral Davis has led men and women in combat, and her extensive experience will be vital to leading our next generation of officers at the Naval Academy. Admiral Davis's confirmation as the next superintendent would be the culmination of a 34-year career dedicated to defending our country, and it will be historic as she will become the first woman to lead the Naval Academy. Mr. President, the incoming class of 2027 reports to the Naval Academy for induction on June 29th, just a few days from now, and the fall semester begins on August 24th. Admiral Davis should be confirmed as superintendent without delay in order to complete the turnover with the ongoing superintendent and prepare for the fall semester. The last time the Naval Academy superintendent did not have a summer change of command was over 59 years ago and it occurred in 1964 when the incumbent superintendent had a heart attack that resulted in early retirement. The Senate needs to confirm the promotion of Rear Admiral Davis now. U.S. Naval Academy superintendents in charge with the moral, mental, and physical development of our 4,500 U.S. Naval Academy midshipmen across four classes who represent roughly one-third of Naval officers that we commission each fiscal year. The position provides direct oversight to the Commandant of Midshipmen, who serves as the Dean of Students and supervises all military and professional development training at the Brigade of Midshipmen, and direct oversight to the civilian academic team who manages the academic programs and student facilities at the U.S. Naval Academy. The superintendent is the, the public face and the premier academic institution and consistently hosts government officials, international symposiums, and liaison directly with alumni and distinguished members of Congress on all matters pertinent to the institution. Rear Admiral Davis is not confirmed it would force potential course of action that are not in the best interests of the institution. This could include having the 06 Commandant of Midshipmen act as superintendent or temporarily assigning another flag officer to act as superintendent. Neither of these options provides the continuity, leadership, and seniority required to oversee a world-class academic institution. The other option could be to require an involuntary extension 
of the current superintendent of the economy who's already selflessly served this country for over 40 years. So, Mr. President, I think we all recognize that the United States Naval Academy is a unique institution. It provides us the trained leadership for future generations in our, in our military. It is an academic institution that needs the full-time attention of a CEO to manage all the aspects that go on at the Naval Academy. We need to have that person in place before the beginning of this academic year, which is just a few days off. Delaying this promotion will adversely affect the morale and readiness of the Naval Academy and beyond. Delaying this promotion is unfair to the young men and women already at or entering the Naval Academy who have signed up to put themselves in harm's way to serve our nation in uniform. Delaying this promotion is a gratuitous self-inflicted wound to our national security. So, Mr. President, I'm going to make this unanimous consent request. I do that, as I said earlier. Uh, with my experience on the Board of Visitors representing this institution, uh, charged with doing everything we can to make sure that we are as supportive as possible to our men and women who wear the uniform in this nation, and to those that are attending the U.S. Naval Academy, I ask unanimous consent that the Senate proceed to the consideration of the following nomination, calendar number 192, Rear Admiral Yvette M. Davis, to be Vice Admiral, that the Senate vote on the nomination without intervening motion, action, or debate, that if confirmed, the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table, and the President be immediately notified of the Senate's action. Is there objection? Mr. President. Senator from Alabama. Reserving the right to object. This is the uh, ninth time that my colleagues on the left have come to the floor to try to break my hold on the Department of Defense nominees. <clears throat> this is the ninth time that I've come to the floor to keep my word. Since the last time we did this, nothing has changed, and so my hole will remain in place. I want to be clear about this, because my Democratic colleagues have been spreading a little bit of disinformation. I'm not blocking anyone from getting confirmed. I'm not blocking a single vote. I'm only blocking unanimous consent. If Democrats want to vote on these nominees, one at a time, I'm all for it and will probably vote for them. I understand that Senator Cardin is a strong supporter of this nominee. I'm a strong supporter of the Naval Academy. I've had several relatives have gone to the Naval Academy. It's possible that when these come up, I will vote on all of them. But so far, let me just respond to some of the false claims that, I've been, that have been made against me in the press and even on this floor in the last week or so. Yesterday, the White House press secretary was asked why they haven't reached out to me at all from the White House. She said, I do not know. I do not know when the last time is that the White House has talked to the Senator. I'll tell you when the last time was. Never. The White House has not reached out to me once in four months. No one has contacted me. There's not been one conversation not one path forward. I have spoken to Secretary Austin outside of armed services hearing exactly once in the last two years. That was a 10-minute phone call three months ago. He made absolutely no effort to find a compromise in our situation. I've never once heard from Chairman Reed on this issue of the Armed Services Committee. Absolutely no discussion regarding my concerns. Instead, Chairman Reed has attacked me on this floor, and I've never once heard from Senator Schumer. Instead, Senator Schumer has attacked me six or seven times on this floor as we, uh, uh, in his seat. Many of the claims made about me have been completely false. This is no way to negotiate with a colleague. I don't understand it, especially not in this body, the United States Senate. Frankly, this kind of behavior just steals my revolve. The more false claims that my colleagues on the left make about me and the, the more it makes me inclined to just hold my holes in place. I've already laid out the reasons why these claims do not add up. I don't need to repeat them all as we speak. We don't need to waste time. 
But I would note that yesterday, a news story reported correctly that these military positions are being fulfilled by acting officials. These jobs are being done as we speak. They're not empty. Four months ago into this situation, that is obvious that people are doing the job. It is not affecting our readiness. Anyone who says otherwise is wrong. So let me just say this one more time because I keep getting asked the same question over and over again. I will keep my hold until the Pentagon follows the law and Congress changes the law. That's the way we do it here in the Senate. A show vote in committee is not good enough. We can do that all we want, but it's not going to make any difference. An amendment that gets stripped out on the floor by Senator Schumer is not good enough. What I've said from the beginning, either follow the law or change it. Follow the law that we have made in this body or change the law. The burden is not on me. It's not on me to pass this legislation. This is an illegal policy that they've changed to. So let's, in this body, discuss it and go one way or the other. The burden is on the administration to stop breaking the law. And that's exactly what's going on here. There are two conditions that would get me to stop this and drop this hold. And I think everybody knows those conditions. So because of that, Mr. President, I object. Mr. President. Objection is heard. Senator from Maryland. Uh, Mr. President, I'm, obviously I'm deeply disappointed uh, by an objection being heard here. But I, I really feel compelled to, to, to explain one factor of my colleagues' comments. We don't want the military involved in politics. We do everything we can to keep them insulated from the internal politics of the Congress, of the Senate and the House. And that's exactly what my colleague is doing by this hold. We're responsible to make sure that we support our men and women in harm's way. Having the military academies properly managed is part of our responsibility so that they have the tools they need to defend our nation. And one last point that was mentioned by my colleague about having up and down votes on these nominations that he would not hold that up. Well, he is. He's requiring to break a filibuster. What he's suggesting is that he's not letting us have an up or down vote. That's what my unanimous consent would have allowed. My unanimous consent would have allowed us to have an up or down vote on the nomination so we don't have to go through a cloture motion, which is exactly what my colleague is suggesting we need to go through in order to vote on the hundreds of these promotions within the military, that if we follow the course that he is suggesting, those plebes that are entering this month at the Naval Academy will be in their second year before we can get around to voting on that nomination. So for all those reasons, I, I regret that we are playing politics with our military uh, and uh, affecting uh, our ability to defend our nation. I yield the floor. Mr. President. The Majority Leader. I move to proceed to legislative session. Questions on the motion? All those in favor will say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. I move to proceed to executive session to sit, consider calendar number 30. Questions on the motion? All those in favor will say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. One more. The clerk will report the nomination. 